to move more and to make better choices. You ain't trying hard enough. If you, if that's the maximum weight and you're talking about something, I've been trying hard. You only been going up. What you mean you've been trying hard? Where is the try at all? What are you, like, what are you trying? If that's trying, can you, then, 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 then don't try at all. Like, what are you, like, I don't even know. Like, if that is trying, you might as well just stop it and then do the other thing because, like, you're not helping. It's okay to be in a relationship. Like, it's fine. I think that just for somebody like Amber, I think that she should stay away from relationships right now. I think that she should focus on herself and that, that should be it because, like, I've not seen a point in her life where she hasn't been in a relationship and that is very concerning to hop from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person without any like type of gap in between those things. So if you guys remember January 1st, I weighed in at 515.8. February 1st, I weighed in at 508.8, .8, which means in January I lost seven pounds, which at the time I was like, I don't know if that's good enough, but looking back, I'm very proud of that. So today, actually before we get to it, I do have one question. People thinking that I have weighed over 600 pounds at one point, especially like 2019, because your girl looked, <clears throat> she looked like she weighed over 600 pounds. I don't know why the 600 pound measurement is so incredibly like demonizing for her. I mean, if you're almost 600 pounds, like you're on the brink, hasn't she at her most been like one, like 570 at her most? Why does it matter if you were like almost there? You basically were touching 600 pounds. And the fact that you were just chilling in 500 pounds is no achievement in and of itself. So the fact that you're looking at this like, no, you best believe that I've never, I've never, ever even touched 600 pounds. So how dare you? Why does it matter? Why does it matter, dude? And then also to go back to the other point of I lost six pounds in one month, it doesn't matter either. The fact that you've literally lost that six pounds, like, I don't know, 20 times at this point, but regained it sub right after that. And you've done that like eight, nine, 10 times already. It doesn't matter. Like at this point, I don't care. Like it's so incredibly, it, it, it just doesn't, doesn't matter anymore. The, the entire point of your weight loss should be consistent weight loss. It's okay every once in a while to have that one week where you fucked up. You had that Big Mac, you had that QP in your mouth and that shit was a little bit too good. So maybe you got a second QP and you destroyed your calories for the day, but you shouldn't have that happen to you every single week after one week of solid weight loss and then that next week that next week and the next week you just continuously gain weight so all the progress that you made of losing that weight is gone it just is evaporated so it's almost kind of like irrelevant i don't even know why you care so much about that and the fact that you think that people do it's it's just like it's like spitting in my mouth right the fact that you think that us as the audience are watching this going oh amber that six pounds you lost in one month, which, you know, for some, a girl that's over 500 pounds, oh, six pounds, really? I'm, I'm convinced. I can lose six pounds in a week if I really tried. I could do it. No problem. Six pounds? I'm like 150 right now, 155. I could easily lose six pounds, easily, in a week. I bet, 100%. The fact that she's saying that she lost six pounds in a month is really not not good at all. I mean, but granted, this woman has a very hard time eating. She has a very big, big, big illness when it comes to food. So I can see why she has such a hard time, but I don't know why she's like bragging about it. She's lost that six pounds so many times. Pounds, let's be real. Not only did I look it, but my lifestyle was very much that very much i want to know what the difference would be does anybody know the difference between being 500 pounds and 600 pounds in terms of lifestyle it can't be that much different right i mean the gap between say for instance 300 and 500 pounds that is crazy 300 to 400 pounds is crazy right i know some people that that i mean i've literally seen amber where she was able to do jumping jacks in one video and she weighed like 300 something pounds but now that she was like 400 she couldn't it was infeasible for her to do jumping jacks and that should really go to tell you and also she she was a little bit older too so maybe that also played a role i mean the aging process in and of itself is like a gradual one but Thinking about the weight that's accumulating on your body at a consistent rate, it's probably like exponential aging in the sense of like the weight that would have like the legs, right? Let's say for instance, your joints, ordinarily, if you're a person that's like regular sized, you're not going to be dealing with the traumas of having joint pains at an early age. So if like you're in your twenties or thirties, you're probably, ah, you probably won't deal with many joint pains unless you're like an avid uh, athlete or you're doing something very extreme, like heavy lifting, things like that. You probably won't have to deal with that stuff. Now, Pile on an extra 400 pounds on top of your frame, years and years and years, upwards of a decade plus. 
now you now you really have a lot of problems because your joints have had to deal with this. Like the amount of weight pushing down upon the earth and then the equal amount of weight pushing back up from the earth, you're literally dealing with that every single day. So I obviously the aging process of these joints are and they're just going to be severely di just diminished. It's like getting a brand new truck, right? It's a beautiful, amazing, awesome truck. You can get a lot of miles out of this car, right? With almost no maintenance. But instead of using the truck for its intended purposes, you're stacking cinder blocks on it. You're just throwing random weight all over the truck. You're stacking weight on the outside. You got canoes just mounted on the outside of your truck. And then you drive it for five years. By that five years end, it's like you drove that car for 20 years because the thing has been used and abused. Going down hills, just having the brakes be fucking, you know what I'm talking about? That's what it's like when you have a body that shouldn't be utilized in the way that it's supposed to, that it's used that it's here which is like you're just casually walking around at over 500 pounds not supposed to happen 600 pound life esque if you're new here amber's highest recorded weight was 572.4 yeah. pounds so essentially she was 600 pounds yeah uh this is like the solid fact dude what is she like what was she 15 18 pounds away from 18 pounds away from 600 pounds why does it matter why does it matter at this point? Like, it, it, you're so far off the realm. I mean, granted, if that 600-pound number is, like, that the real deal for you, it, I don't, maybe, sure, but, like, dude, come on now. I emphasize the word recorded because once Amber reached that weight, she gave up on weighing in for her videos and claimed she even stopped weighing in at all, even for herself. Damn. Therefore, if you ask Amber what her highest weight was, she will always say my highest ever recorded weight was 572.4 pounds. <laughs> That's like somebody saying like allegedly, right? Like allegedly this is the this is how much I I weighed at one point. That's extraordinarily telling. So she could possibly have been over 600 pounds. Again, it doesn't matter. I don't care. Like the fact that you even are able to reach 700 and, my bad. Who? 572 pounds is insane. All right? Just for some just for some regular numbers here. I think the average weight for a woman here in America is like 150, 140, something like that. So this woman at nearly 600 pounds, weighs approximately as much as four, four women, four, is that four, 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 four to five women. And then also you got to account for this, right? Those women, those individual women, like if you stacked up four women, they all have bones. Okay. They are individual people. Now think about that and then have that be applied to Amber, who is one person. She doesn't have the benefit of having extra bones. <laughs> she doesn't have the added benefit of having like muscle mass. No, she's a one person. And then she's stacking on all the commutative weight of those four people, four or five people on top of her. That's crazy to me. That's insane. That's insane, dude. Obviously, at the time, it wasn't even something I was even able to admit to myself because my normal was that light. Why does our girl, why does our girl do so much with the makeup, bro? Like, I don't, I don't understand. Like, you know what I, oh, man, what really hurts me so deeply is that this hairline that she's got is so amazing, dude. It's so beautiful. Am I wrong? Her hairline is amazing. So thick, so coarse. And I know that she eats a lot of food and her nutrition is probably hysterically disgusting. So when I see people that eat terrible, disgusting, atrocious foods and their hormones are probably incredibly imbalanced. And then I look at a person that is mid-maxing. You know what I'm talking about? People that are going into the doctor, they're going to the gym, they're really focusing on the nutrition, macro and micronutrients, and they have the genetics that just tell them, nope, fuck you, your hair is going away at 18. It's just tough. <laughs> it's tough for me to see that, dude, because I look at these people, I'm like, you are abusing good genetics. You have good genetics, and you are taking those genetics, and you're going, fuck that shit. I don't give a fuck. I'm eating pizza rolls for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You ain't telling me shit, bitch. That's what I hear, and that's tough. If at the time, so I was just like Delulu in my brain. But Man, I hate that new word, dude. I hate when people say this, dude. Delulu. Delulu right now is a fashionable way of saying delusional. And I don't like it. Too many people are saying it. It's like when people used to say cap and everybody said it for like a year and a half. Now nobody says it anymore. It's cringe. It's cringe. Stop following along, dude. Amber, isn't Amber like 34? That life at the time so i was just like delulu in my brain but it's just like looking back now i'm just like wow so i get it you guys i wow what aren't you like literally like 70 if you just told me that you were 515 and you lost six pounds so that would mean you're about 508 509 something like that 
that means you're still like in the realm of 500 pounds. I don't know why you're looking at your previous self going like, oh my, I can't believe that I was so far gone. I was literally almost 600 pounds. This is so crazy. I can't believe that I thought like that. I was delusional. Amber, you're still 500. You do understand that, right? Like you're still in that same bracket and I get it. It's better than it was at 570, but Dude, you're still, you're way too far gone to even sit there and go, I was delusional then, but you're not delusional now? Why not now? You're, you're still here. You're still on the same road. You haven't done much. You just keep gaining and going back. So, like, what do you mean? Like, oh, my God, I was delusional. I can't believe I was 600 pounds. Dude, you're literally still 500. Yeah, the fact that you're maintaining that and you only lost six pounds in a month is crazy, Amber. But speaking of delusional. 100% understand why people think that at one point i was over 600 pounds but i can safely say like when it comes why to does it matter why is she focusing so heavily on what people think based off her weight why does it fucking matter amber it's only 600 pounds compared to what you weigh 570 is not too good either me stepping on the scale i physically have never seen anything higher than 572.4 boop yep it's always that same response She's that's like somebody going like you're gay, right? Like, there's that there's that video that came out that showed, like, somebody that looked like you that was sucking on BBC, and that, that was you, right? You're gay? Nah, I, there's no video of my face ever showing of me gargling down that black guy that you was talking about that I did probably never. I've never done that. It, there's, no, there's no video of it, so it can't be true. Never. There would never happen. No. Nah, even though maybe it had happened one time that I did have the flavor of some sweet black Johnson in my mouth. Nah, you never saw it, so therefore it doesn't exist. This quote, never seen the scale say she was 600 pounds, but we're just arguing semantics at yeah, this true. point. Because like she just said, her lifestyle was that of a 600 pound person. In 2019, Amber was constantly at urgent care or in emergency rooms due to complications with her health, such as multiple cases of cellulitis, infections, back pain, leg pain. She has also admitted that she was bed bound all of 2019 and couldn't bathe without the help of back. So I, I want to know at what point, because I see I see a lot of these people dealing with problems like this. And now granted, a lot of the fat acceptance, fat liberation people are not particularly this big like you'll struggle to find anybody that's over 400 pounds that's crazy 400 pounds is insane but over 400 pounds you're killing you're, you're literally destroying the game at that point so when i see people that are like chilling at like 250 300 350 pounds i know that they're still dealing with a lot of these issues but the fact that amber can go through all of these problems right and have these issues be consistently happening, consistently over and over and over, year in, year out, and do nothing about it. To me, I don't know. Like, I can't resonate with that at all because I know when I have an issue, I'm going to the doctors, right? Maybe when I was a younger man, when I was like in my earlier 20s, dude, I most definitely never went to the doctor. I was scared of the doctor. I was a bitch. Don't be a bitch and go to the doctor. It's fine to go to the doctor, okay? Um, hashtag your doctor knows what's best. Not always. If your doctor is recommending that he slides his tongue in your butt cheeks maybe not unless it's like you know your doctor is actually your boyfriend and he's just a doctor on the side or something like that that might be okay but ordinarily if you have a problem go to the doctor get it solved you shouldn't have to like you know that's good right but i never went to the doctor now as an older person and i know that when you have aches and pains and things like that and they may go away but if you have a serious issue go to the fucking doctor the fact that amber has as many issues as she does and those things could be simply alleviated by the by just losing weight and she doesn't do it i don't know i understand that it's not as easy for especially for somebody like amber especially because she's been going through this cycle for the past 10 plus years at this point it wouldn't be that easy obviously it would have been done by now if it was that easy and there's obviously way more underlying problems than just lose weight there's obviously way more than that. Our girl has tried to lose weight for 10 plus years at this point. So I really, really feel for her on that particular front. Like it's it's taxing her. But when I see somebody that has really good genetics, because believe it or not, Amber does have really good genetics in the sense of like she's able to put up with as much problems as she has been with her body and still is here. That's incredible. That's incredible. Her organs must be incredibly durable. Her body has to be incredibly durable to put up with the amount of stress and, and the, the, the severe abuse that she's put herself under. Great genetics. Can you imagine if she was a thinner person, how long she would live? Dude, she would be living until she was like 90, 80, 90, 100 years old easily. And maybe even maybe even more than that because of how much drama, how much, how much trauma that she's put herself under now, I'm struggling to even see anything over 50, 60 at most, right? And that's really tough to see. Because 
I would want nothing more than Amber to be healthier and be a better, more healthier person. But ultimately, no one else can help her but herself. And I see too many times, especially with somebody like Amber, is that she really embodies the person that she's with. And then she finds ways to forgive herself based off of those people in that relationship. So for instance, I can't do things for myself. It's really on to Becky. So if Becky's not doing it, I can't help myself, which is fucking terrible, disgusting, bad shit. I see people doing that a lot where they go. My boyfriend didn't want to do this for me, so in order to punish him, I'm not going to eat for the next two days. What the fuck are you doing? What are you talking about? Can you imagine suffering for two days because your boyfriend didn't buy you an MK purse or something else like that? I see that so often, right? And it's the same thing here, except it's worse because it shouldn't be up to the person in the relationship to help you in this particular way when they may not even be equipped to do those particular types of things, right? I always think it's beneficial for somebody in the relationship to point these things out and help you. But if the person in your relationship can't do those things, you're fucked up for trying to put those responsibilities on that person. When you are the adult, you have the ability to do that shit. And instead, you're like imbuing all that responsibility in that person. And then when they don't do that stuff, you blame them by, by putting trauma upon yourself, which is what you're doing by continuously gaining weight and staying at these higher, avel these higher body weight percentages that only fundamentally are, are hurting you and then everybody else around you. So, um, incredibly selfish. Slept sitting straight up and even needed Beck's help in the bathroom. Yeah, I saw that video where she was literally taught, like she said that she couldn't wash herself for an entire year, which was, holy shit, I can't even imagine. I did, I did go one time, right? When I was about 14 years old, um, whenever Modern Warfare 2 came out, right? The original Modern Warfare 2, I remember I had gone from the time I got out of school from the time you got back into school, I did not take a single shower. And I was smelling like pure Dorito dust and probably raccoon, raccoon testicles. It was absolutely atrocious. I don't know what I was doing. I was just sitting there day in, day out, eating Hot Pockets and drinking Pepsi, playing Call of Duty every day. And I sucked dick at it. I wasn't even good. And Yes, somebody should have helped me. I was 14 years old. Obviously, it wasn't only it wasn't ultimately up to me. I should have had somebody around me telling me, dude, what the fuck is wrong with you? Take a fucking shower, right? Nobody told me that. Um, shamefully, and if they did, I wasn't listening. So I'm not gonna sit there and blame anybody else besides myself, right? I wouldn't do that now. But I know I had to have weighed when I was like 14 years old, probably 110. 110, 105 or something like that. I was a very small person at those at those ages. Even up till recently, I would say a time when I was like 22, I still had weight around that that amount. I remember literally going into a Target with my friend and there was a scale and it was like one of the scales you could just use and he got on the scale and it said he was 250. He was a big man at the time and I got on the scale and I had full clothes on, right? Shoes and all and I weighed 111. And then I knew at that moment, I was like, I got to fucking gain weight. That's crazy. That's my first time ever seeing the weight on the scale and then seeing like, this is not a grown man weight. It's not even for somebody of my size. But the point I'm making is I know that I probably stench. I probably I had a stench that was unfathomable for most people. I couldn't even believe what it'd be like for somebody to be almost 600, 600 pounds and have that go on for an entire year, no washing or anything like that. And when you do wash, you're relying on somebody else who, let me just be honest for a second. Thank God Becky left that relationship because she's literally said that she shouldn't have to put up with that. She was sedating herself and all that stuff. That's what she said. I couldn't even imagine being in a relationship with somebody that literally could do it for themselves, but chooses not to. And then has you washing them, even though they can do it themselves. Not an old person, not your mom, not your dad, not your grandfather, whoever that can physically no longer do these things that worked a hard life to get to where they were and now needs help in order to live a normal life. That's no, that's different. Having a person in your relationship who's probably in 2019, 29, 28 years old that can literally not wash themselves and has to rely on you to give them sponge baths, sponge baths, and if you don't do it, they just don't clean. They just don't clean, and they're bed bound for the entire year when they can literally just not do that. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that insane? That is insane. I don't care what anybody says. Come here. Come here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Wait, what's yeah, your song? Uh -huh. <laughs> Such a Come here. Come here. <laughs> Wait, I didn't hear yeah, that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Such a lie. Oh my god. That is not a large portion. Of bro, can can I go back? Hold on, bro. Can I hear what she said? Can I turn this up any higher? Come here. Come here. Uh -huh. <laughs>
<laughs> Can somebody yeah, please? Uh -huh. What did she say there? Can somebody please tell me? I have no idea what she said there. That it, it, okay. Somebody help me out. Why? Oh my god. That is not a large. Did she say like you smell like shit? Of 2019, if not the whole 2019, <laughs> where I literally couldn't shower. I bathed in bed. I'm sharing this with you. Oh my now. god. Of how far I've come. It wouldn't even be frequently. Like Becky would. It's great. It is great that you no longer need another person to wash yourself. But like, what are we celebrating right now, dude? Oh, it's like, oh, now I can finally wash myself. I've been doing that for a long time, you know? And do I get a reward? Can somebody give me, uh, uh, can somebody like in the comments, can you tell me that I'm a good person for cleaning myself? Because I didn't know that we were celebrating the default at this point. You know what I'm talking about? It's like when girls, <laughs> when girls complain, they're like, dude, you're giving me the bare minimum. And it's like, yeah, I know. I know I'm giving you the bare minimum. Guys that are supposed to wash clean, take care of the house and things like that. Like a guy like, what are you talking about, babe? I washed the dishes two weeks ago and I washed the floor when you moved in. What are you talking about? And like, you're giving me the bare minimum, sweetie. What are you talking about? Like, you're not doing anything extra. This is like that. It's like, you're literally talking about like things that you should have ordinarily been doing default. Like washing yourself is crazy. At least in the boyfriend thing, hopefully that guy's working and making money and doing other stuff. But in this scenario, it's worse. <laughs> Because, like, you're living with somebody else and you can't even wash yourself. And now we're supposed to celebrate the fact that you can't wash yourself. But you know what? We will. We'll take a win wherever we can. Good job, Amber. Fantastic. Washing yourself now. 2020, 2024. Good job washing yourself. <laughs> get Steps. A, like, container and she would put hot water and soap in it for me. And Dude, I, I, Becky's a fucking saint, dude. Oh, my God. I can't even believe that. Look, if you have to wash somebody in your family, if you have to do extra things that you ordinarily wouldn't have to do because you are be you it's just the hand that you were dealt, right? You, you know, we all have things that we wish we didn't have to do, but we still have to do it because that's called responsibility. That's awesome. That's fine. I'm not saying you shouldn't be doing those things. But if you're in a voluntary relationship with somebody and you feel like you have to wash them and that other stuff like that, man, oh my God, I couldn't even imagine what it would be like to wash Amber. All the amoebas, all of the uh infestations the growths and like what if you're working wasn't becky working the whole time can you imagine like working a hard day's job and coming back home having to wash amber and then cook clean take care of the house because she's bed bound dude you're like that's crazy i would tell her to leave the room and uh, i would do what i could so if i ever was 600 pounds or more i never knew i never saw that that's not head. good though like what is even that excuse like if i was 600 pounds it is what it is i think at this point it doesn't even matter anymore. Sure. I think what matters is I agree, is it doesn't now. matter. I feel like I'm making really good progress in my opinion. So whether I was 600 pounds at one point or not, it's very obvious how much I have changed since then. How much, what do you mean by changed? Like, I, I think it's a very weird word to use here. What do you mean by changed? In the sense of like, sure, you've lost something like 60 pounds or something like that since that point. Now granted, 60 pounds is quite a pretty penny. I'll agree with you. Good job, Amber, on losing 60 pounds. But, dude, you're still over 500 pounds, dude. Can we get that? Can we get it below 400 at the bare minimum? I mean, you're literally taking dubs where they're not even there. You're taking, you're taking, look, hashtag W because I'm now under 510 pounds. Hopefully, I don't gain that weight back next week by binging 8,000 calories. What are, what, what are we supposed to do here, dude? What kind of award are we giving you? Or not it's very obvious how much i have changed since then what is your goal weight i used to okay. answer with 199 out of the 500s out of the 400s out of the 300s 199 would be great for amber i mean granted she would still be obese i think at 199 i don't know how tall she is i think somebody told me she's 5'4 she would still be obese at that that weight but she would be oh my gosh she would be a way better way 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 oh my god the health status would be improved like crazy if she was playing a game it'd be like you eating a a, a stim pack like you know what i'm talking about your health would go from like the bars blinking to like it would like go all the way it wouldn't fill all the way up but at least it would be like a, all the way back it would be insane out of the 200s and i was in the wonderland area what I love about Amber is that she continuously pushes back the goalpost. Like, she'll be like, oh, my goal is 199. And then the next year is like, my goal is 300 pounds. And next year, my goal is 500 pounds. And then never reaches the goal. And continuously, the, the goalpost gets pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And ultimately, 
the goals never get reached, even the one, even when you keep pushing them back. So, like, what's even the point of setting goals at this point? Just do weight loss passively, and then hopefully you lose some weight, dude. Because you, the goals that you set are not even, like, you have no reason to you never reach them. Then I changed it to 170. I felt like that was more healthy than 199. It's really hard for me to do anything that involves me moving my leg. My body is craving the sun. I do what do you? What kind of shit is that? Like, I can't do anything that involves me moving my leg. So, like, you just what do you do then? You just crawl on the floor like a slug to get to the food or the fridge? Like, what are you talking about? What? Okay, maybe I'm missing something. I spend a lot of time indoors. So what does that even mean? Like, I'm I'm craving the sun, so you just go outside and sit down for like 25 minutes and come back in. <sighs> Man, like I'm 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 a victim of this too, and I know a lot of people nowadays are a victim of. Dude, staying inside. I remember somebody had told me, dude, how you going to pay all this money in rent and go outside? You're paying all that money just to go outside and not use it? And then I thought, that's a good point. Like some people are paying two, three, four thousand dollars $4,000 in rent, which is crazy, by the way, just to go outside. Seems kind of crazy, but ultimately you do need to go outside. A lot of people nowadays, man, I know, especially, I know a lot of guys that are making a lot of money that all they do all day is like they work from home. And I think purposefully working from home is probably a better thing. Like, it's fine. If you want to work from home, it's probably good for you, especially if you have people around you have to take care of things like that. Sure, you have responsibilities at the house. It's probably better to work from home. But I think it's a, it's like a double-edged sword because you're staying inside. It's forcing you to stay inside because that's where you work. So you're possibly staying inside for eight hours a day. And when you are off work, what are you doing? You're probably or ordering Uber Eats. That's just coming to your door. And then you go on Discord whenever your friends light up and you get that message, hey, bro, hop online. You play online all day. And then you go to sleep and do that shit day in, day out for your entire fucking life. I can't even imagine the amount of mental stress a lot of people are going under nowadays because of the amount of non-communication they're having with people or even the outside realm of the outside like the sidewalk is like foreign to you and it's got to be tough and i'm not saying that people that are working don't have it like rough in the sense of like people that work outside and things like that obviously i think obviously they do but this is like a very particular scenario that's happening nowadays and i don't know what the downstream effect of this is we have so many people nowadays that are so incredibly antisocial that have absolutely no idea how to communicate with people in a physical, physical realm, right? It's fine if you're not talking to people on Discord, but do you not talk to somebody out in public that's like calling you an asshole or something like that? You just shut down. The amount, I remember I worked with this girl and she was a cashier. This girl had to have been 40. I don't know, 40 something years old. I was a cashier at the time, right? I was like 21, 22. And this girl, I guess she had given the improper change or something like that. Ordinarily, if somebody, if you give somebody the improper change, all you do is go, uh, okay, yep, I'm going to give you the receipt. We're going to count the till and then you're going to go to the front and then we're going to give you the money back if you're right because you're not just going to give somebody money because you think that they gave you the incorrect change. You might have, you might have given them incorrect, incorrect change, but it's always better to authenticate it so that way you don't get caught up on that shit and you end up getting fired for some bullshit. Anyway, this girl... Um, I guess the woman was yelling at her and screaming at her and I shit you not this girl just left like she literally just left the, the entire register right there and walked out the front door and she was in the parking lot crying on one of those like you know those barriers that you park in front of she was crying on one of those and then for the entire rest of the day like she was outside for three hours crying and here's the thing that's terrible obviously and uh, I don't think that people that are in like to have these type of mental instabilities probably shouldn't be places like that. But if you have no other choice and you have to work in these positions, it's tough, right? I'm not here to deny people's mental illnesses or mental problems, right? That's tough. Um, but it's it's a consequence of like the way we live nowadays, right? It's just how it is. Anyway. I'm sitting in bed all day because I went through a very big funk where that is what I did, but no longer. Yes, I'm sitting down in a chair because my leg and my breathing. It's all because I'm over 500 pounds. Yeah. I think the evolution- At least she can acknowledge it, but it, for some reason, so many, there's like a group of people that will get off on telling you their problems and they can articulate their problems accurately, 100%. Like you're talking to, a, I talked to a dude and I, talk, I remember him telling me he would spend thousands of dollars on marijuana every single month. He would do it, right? And I'd go, aren't you in debt? Like, don't you have a family? Don't you have another son coming on the way? Like, don't you have this? Yeah, bro, I know it's an issue. I know I have this drug problem. I know that I can get over it. It's just marijuana, but I really love it. And you know, like, 
I think I could probably change. I could probably do this. I do spend too much money on it. It is an issue and things like that, right? I'm taking out debt for it, this like that. And I go, okay, that's awesome that you can articulate this. But what are you going to do? Next month, next month, I'm going to do something about it. Next month, I'm probably going to I'm probably gonna change some things around. That next month comes. Yeah, bro, I know I saw this issue, but like something happened. And like I had to keep smoking because otherwise like I wouldn't have been able to deal with this and like this and this and this or whatever. Like, I'm not here to deny you having a time and a place where you can indulge in whatever fuck you want to indulge in. But if it's, there's a limit to everything, right? Like, it becomes an issue when it becomes an issue. Anything is fine. Like, you watch porn, but it becomes an issue when you watch too much porn. In the same way that if you eat too, if you're eating food, fine. But if you eat too much food, then it becomes a fucking issue. Everything in moderation. You understand? So if you're sitting there, and you're articulating all these problems, and then you still keep doing it, that is worse than somebody not knowing what the issue is, or they're ignorant to why they're doing this thing. Like somebody that's drug addicted, and they can't get out of the system of things because they don't know why they're even addicted to begin with, or maybe it's something that happened to them early in life, or whatever the fuck. They don't know why. I can forgive that, because they're not, they don't understand it, right? They're not in a position where they're they're ignorant, right? But if you're sitting there, and they, you could tell me all this stuff, you're not doing anything about it. There's something about these people the self admittance, right? They just get off on it. Like they just love to know that they have this problem and they can they they can perfectly tell you what the problem is, yet they never do anything about it. Never be around those people because ultimately they're just going to make you upset and they're going to be caught in that endless loop. There's nothing you can do. That person is just perpetually fucked because they can't it's not about you telling them what it is, what's wrong with them. They know what's wrong. You have to step away from that situation because ultimately until they change, they're not going to change and they have to be the ones ultimately that changes. In the case of right here, Amber, she has to be the one that decides where she changes, how she changes because nobody else can do it for her. She's a grown woman, so she has to do it for herself. And my breathing. It's all because... I'm over 500 pounds. I think the evolution of Amberlynn's double chin is the most interesting thing about this channel. It's definitely getting a little big, you know, but it could be bigger. Sure, it could be bigger, but like what kind of fucking, what kind of logic is that? That's like somebody going like, oh, I did like drive off to the sidewalk and kill 10 people, but I could have killed 11. I could have killed 11, right? What kind of logic is that? It definitely could be bigger and sure. it's not. So I think we're okay. I, I think that's just sums, up, sums it up. Could be bigger, but it's not. So we're good. Wait, show me how to get out. Damn, that's like, if, if you ever talk to a girl and she says that, dude, that's some major disrespect. Can you imagine getting that conference? So like, what you think about that big shit I got right here? What you think about that BB sizzle? What you think about it? You know, it could be bigger, but I mean, it's all right. Like, that's really all that matters, right? It could be bigger, but it's not, you know, but it's all right. I would be, so I'd, I'd kick you out. What you talking about? You don't think I got that bigness? Because that's my only like issue. How am I gonna get out? <laughs> it's crazy, dude. I can imagine. You ever? There was a, a video I saw of like a golden retriever that was in water, and he was dirty as fuck. Like this dude had dirt all over him, and he was just sitting in like a stream, and the dirt was just like lines behind it. It was so beautiful. Maybe you're seeing it on your screen right now. I don't know if you are, but it was beautiful to gaze my eyes upon. I feel like it'd be like that with the, or like a moth that poops and somebody puts it below water and it just kind of streams out. I feel like it'd be like that if Amber was in the water. But can you imagine telling somebody that? I don't want to get into the the tub. I don't want to get into the the pool because I might not be able to get out. So what's what do you what do you, what do you do there? You just like is that your live? Is, is this your life? Like you just be, you just become like a slug in the water? Why do you want to live this life? Why is it? That people are around you going like, oh, we're going to have so much fun today. Dude, we're going to have a pool party. It's going to be awesome. And then you go, yeah, but I can't actually go into the, the pool because I'm so fat that it's actually impossible for me to lift up my leg enough to even put it into the pool to begin with. I'd just be sitting there going, why are we together, dude? What is the point of us being in this relationship if you literally cannot do anything and I have to do everything for you? It's not fun. How do you get out? with my fucking legs what do you mean how do i get out you know amber i get it like you've lived in this this body for a really long time and it might be like implausible for you to think about what it's like to be a thinner person but it shouldn't be as difficult as how do you get out by lifting up my leg and going over yes who would have known who would have known i don't know if i can lift my leg like that Crazy. i'll be honest i lost like all my motivation to get up and vlog even just to put on makeup <laughs> gotta take the elevator there is a way to lose weight eating fast food 
Do you want to? Do I want to? No. No. It's such a crazy thing to say, like, there is a way to lose weight. There is a way to lose weight when eating fast food. And it is possible, sure, if you're the type of person that only wants to eat, like, once a day or twice a day. And you just want to eat that couple QPs and call it a day. That's fine. I wouldn't recommend it for anybody since it's, like, very – it's possible, but it's also – it's not, like – it's not sustainable, I feel like. And it's also like, why would you do that when you can maximize the calories as much as you can? Eat more food throughout the day and get more nutrients nutrients, and maximize it. But, I mean, if you want to do it, you can. But for somebody like Amber, she should probably be eating as much food as she can within the calorie count. It's ready. 572.4 pounds. Jeez, man. 572.4. Oh. There's my weigh-in. It's the heaviest I've ever weighed, which, like I said, it's freaking irony. I swear to God, like, I've been trying Damn. so hard to move more and to make better choices. You ain't trying hard enough. If you, if that's the maximum weight and you're talking about something, I've been trying hard, you only been going up. What you mean you've been trying hard? Where is the try at all? What are you, like, what are you talking, if that's trying, can you, then, then, then don't try at all. Like, what are you, like, I don't even know. Like, if that is trying, you might as well just stop it and then do the other thing because, like, you're not helping. I'm really glad I have this weight because I don't ever want to be here again. I don't ever. She reached the weight again? How the fuck did you reach it again? I never want to be here again. Why don't you just do a weigh-in to prove that you were losing weight? So, every time I go on a weight loss journey or I try to go on a weight loss diet or like a lifestyle change, I am always vlogging it. So, something I wanted to try doing different was just not weighing myself on camera until I got to a point where I was like, wow, I'm proud. Because sometimes I'd weigh in and be like, whoa, I'm down three pounds. Yay. Like, that's stupid. For someone my size, that's not yay. I agree. If you're if you're 570, what did she say? 572 and you lose three pounds in a, in a month? That's fucking, that's atrocious. That is bad, dude. I cannot drink water for a day and I'll lose that weight. If I, losing three pounds is like what normal people lose in like a week. Like, most people... Are, like that, that, that are not focused on weight, maybe they skip a meal, can lose three pounds in a week. No joke. So if you're sitting here, at least she's right about that, but she still does it though. Like she just literally went from, what'd she say, like 515 at the start of the video to 506 or something like that. It's the same shit, dude. That's not something to be proud of, TBH. You guys, I can promise you I am losing weight and I'm actually doing really good and I'm so freaking proud of myself. Cool. Like. I know I say that so much, like in the past, I'd be down like seven pounds and be like, I'm so proud. I mean, seven pounds is a start, but I promise you, I just promise, okay? That's all, that's all I'm gonna say. And despite her saying she's so much different now than she was back then, we can see she was still going to arcades, claiming she was living her best life and shopping even at her house. Yeah, she got a Gucci bag? Is this a Gucci bag, dude? Damn, look at the fucking... It's like strapped around. You ever see one of those hams or like Christmas hams that have like the the ropes around them? You know what I'm talking about? That's what it's kind of like, man. Beast. She voiced all these things were a struggle for her back then and they seem to still be a struggle for her today. No drastic change has occurred since then. Not much has really changed these days. So here is my weigh in from March 1st. She does look thinner. I'll give her that. But simultaneously, dude, she should be a lot thinner. I mean, if you're on a weight loss journey for 10 years, and you lost 70 pounds. I mean, no, what is it, like 60 pounds? Or she she might have weighed more than that, but chronically, uh, the lore-wise, what we know for fact, she was, what, 1572 at most, and now she's 505 or 506 here? It's better. It's better. Sure, it's better, Amber. I'll give you that. You got it. Yep. You go, girl. You go, girl. You got it. Slay Queen, you got it. Hey, guys. So it is March 1st. I want to weigh myself just to see how I did in February since I did the same thing in January. I'm fighting my way to literally the 400s. Let's do this. You've been doing that for like literally five years now. So like, what are you? Okay, well. January. I don't want to. I'm fighting my way here. to literally the 400s. Let's do this. It's ready. 499.6. <laughs> Wait. That's good, Amber. That's really good. I'm happy for you. You finally got below. You finally got below 500 pounds, dude. It, it, oh, man, this is when was this? March, February, February. Oh, oh man. 
I hope it I hope it keeps going because that's a good that's a good progress to get below 400. It's motivation. I hope it's still motivation and she doesn't use it as an excuse to binge again or eat tons and tons and tons of food because oftentimes I see, "Oh my god, I reached a new goal. That means I'm going to go out to Arby's. I'm going to go out to Mickey D's. I'm going to go out to Starbucks and drink a 600,000, 600 calorie drink, a latte, 600 calorie drink, and I'm going to body some all this food. And then she gets disappointed that she gained like an extra 10 pounds for that week. I hope it's not one of those, dude, because Amber is, uh, historically, that is the cycle. I also think Amber should not be in relationships. I think that, look, here's the thing. I think that you, you, it's okay to be in a relationship. Like, it's fine. I think that just for somebody like Amber, I think that she should stay away from relationships right now. I think that she should focus on herself, and that that should be it. Because, like, I've not seen a point in her life where she hasn't been in a relationship, and that is very concerning to hop from one person to the next person to the next person to the next person without any, like, type of gap in between those things. And sure, you could say, David, no, there was a gap. It was, like, two weeks Two weeks is not a gap, dude. You should be going like months. You should be able to take care of yourself and not rely on somebody else to be with you because doesn't Amber have those people like move in right away? That's not good. Work on yourself first and don't rely on other people. It's cool to be in a relationship, but if like if you're continuously hopping to one relationship to the next relationship, that tells me that it's not about relationships with you. It's just like you just don't want to be alone. I freaking did it. I know there's so many people you guys are not going to care, but that's big for me. Cool. I just don't want to see that five anymore cool you guys that means i am in the freaking 400s and i know to a lot of people it's like wow you're celebrating that yeah actually i am i'll give you that i'll give you that and honestly good for you girl yeah true. that was a goal of hers and hey she dipped below 500 but when the fluctuation inevitably happens like it does to all of us that's when the true test comes in for her i am celebrating that i'm not even gonna sit here and explain why because it's obvious that means in February, I am down 9.2 pounds, which makes me so happy. So since January 1st, I am down 16.2 pounds cool. in two months, which a lot of people say I could be losing weight faster, but I feel like the way that I am doing it now is sustainable. That's true. I think that if, if it's slow and steady, don't, if you're losing weight and it's only like 20 pounds every two months and you weigh this much, it's okay. As long as it's maintainable for you and it's something that you can continuously do, that's okay. It's fine. Because the ultimate, the, the the worst thing you can do is have it keep going and then you have spikes of like no and then you gain back that weight. Which is historically what Amber has done. So I don't know if this is going to be maintainable for her. I hope it is. I really hope it is. Because I only want to see Amber succeed in the best way possible. I want it to become healthier. I want it to become uh, more attractive for her and everyone else around her. I want it to be, you know, have not to deal with all these health issues consistently and things like that. I want her to experience a great quality of life, but ultimately it's not about what I want. It's about what Amber chooses to do. And that is up to her ultimately at the end of the day. Oh, well, it's like, if I just woke up one day and I just did everything perfectly, I have no room to grow. I have no room to improve. I only have room to fail, what? to cheat, to not have success because I'm not going to stay perfect. No one stays perfect. Nobody stays perfect. That's true. It's okay to have fuck ups every once in a while, but to sit there and like, Ultimately, you want to have fuck ups. It's okay, like every once in a while, to eat that Big Mac or that QP, but you should be limiting it as much as you can and practice good food habits as much as you can and walk more and things like that. So, that, those things are super important. It's okay to fuck up. You should automatically understand that it's not sustainable in the sense of like, it's sustainable in the grant, in the macro level. Like, you're, it's gonna happen, um, you know, not 100%, but like hopefully 90%. And that 10% is fucking up, which is okay because in the in the grand scheme of things, the 90% should ultimately, uh, I keep saying ultimately, the 90% should be the bigger factor, right? Don't look at the 10%. Try to limit that 10% as much as you can. So with the way that I'm doing things now, I have room to grow, room to improve. As long as I do half of a percent better than the day before, I'm happy with that. I will okay. always leave room for mistakes and slip ups because that's normal. That's part of being a human. I think that's, uh, sure, sure. I mean, sure, there's, it's not the best way to think about it in the sense of like, I'm gonna leave room for fuck ups. I don't know why you would ever wanna do that. There should be like, 
you should perform to the best ability as you possibly can and hope you don't have fuck ups. And if they do come, that's okay because you're growing from those things, right? You should want to fuck up in the sense of like, if you do fuck up, at least now you can correct those things. You understand where you messed up and then you're going to correct that. It's a growing experience because anytime you do anything, you're going to be bad at it. But the great thing is after you're bad at it, you become better and better and better and suddenly you're good at it. And sure, even when you're the best, you're still going to have really bad days and you might not be optimal in those days. That's okay. But you shouldn't sit there and go, I'm going to give myself excuses to fuck up. That's not good. That's not that's not good at all. You, <laughs> you're literally setting yourself up for failure. You're literally giving yourself excuses to, to, to fuck up, which is never good. You should, you should want the best for yourself. I mean, be realistic, but ultim ultimately... You should always be trying to be better as much as you can and not forgiving those and bad so far things. this year i am succeeding and i feel happy about that i feel happy with my progress and the changes that i have made so far but you guys know. that's cool i mean i'm happy that she's doing better i mean she's in the 400s now right at the time of this making of this video that's great i'm happy for her i'm really happy for her i hope it's maintainable i hope it's something that she can continuously do because it is always about the longevity of it instead of just like that little sprint that you had like that you lost the 16 pounds that's cool but if if you gain back that weight in like a next two three weeks it doesn't mean anything it didn't mean anything in the same way that she kept gaining that weight lost losing weight gaining losing gaining losing gaining that's all it is and that's terrible that's bad but i hope she is our girl does the best she possibly can but anyway we're gonna end the video here if you enjoyed today's video i'd appreciate if everybody could leave a like comment subscribe sharing the video i have memberships now so if you want to become a member of my you want to become a member of this channel you can if you don't want to that's fine too if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now however you got here leave it down below by typing in Gorl g-o-r-l because this is an amber lynn reed video i love doing amber lynn reed she's such a dynamic beautiful awesome person she's super super um even though it's really depressing to watch her sometimes her personality in and of itself is very bubbly and i like that and maybe it's just a performative that she's putting on and she's not like really like that in real life i don't know but the videos that she puts out that's the way she is and i like her personality i hope that she and you also live a fantastic beautiful amazing life but I know you are already living a fantastic, beautiful, amazing life just by judging you, like seeing you in person, watching you walk down this. You didn't see me, by the way, the other day. Uh, I was behind that fire hydrant. When you look behind you, you thought somebody was following you. That was I was behind the fire hydrant looking over at you like, oh, yeah, look at that. Damn, they look good. You look really good today. Wow. Because you just looked amazing that day. It wasn't my fault. And I had to come in for a quick sniff to ensure that your hydration and your aroma was also on point. It was, it always is. I don't know why I question it. Honestly speaking here, I'm not questioning it. I just wanted to smell you because your scent is intoxicating beyond belief. And I need to consume all of the smell that you emanate across your soul, your physical shape and everything else that you emanate off yourself. You're a beautiful, amazing person. I want to kiss you on the eyebrows and maybe the lips, depending on if it's consensual, but only in a very platonic way, not romantic or anything like that. Um, anyway, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, my Twitter and discord server. I have a second channel now for other stream clips and stuff like that. So if you want to check that out, you can enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 